On this day in 1922, a young boy working for an archaeologist tipped over a rock while in Egypt. As it turns out, that rock was actually the top stone of a series of steps, steps that led to the incredibly well-preserved tomb of King Tut. King Tut's tomb would reveal a wealth of information about life in ancient Egypt, and in the century since the burial chamber was unsealed, researchers have been able to add on to their learning. Back in 2010, Rob Caldwell spoke with a Tut expert about his work examining the boy king's DNA. You know, I think the most important piece of information now, you know, I've been working for the last two, two years with my team using DNA and CAT scan machine. And I want to tell you, we were able now to reconstruct history. The most important piece that we found out that his mother was actually uh, the sister of Amr Hutub III, this who is the father is of her husband. And, the, and, and Akhenaten was the father of King Tut. Means Akhenaten married his full sister. All and right, that now, caused their son. Let me ask you, Doctor, it has been 3,300 years since King Tut was alive. Why does that matter to us now who his parents were, who his family was? You know, if you ask any child in Portland and say Egypt, he will tell you King Tut, the golden boy. And he will tell you, I don't really know anything about his father. Who is his father? How he died? Many people made films and books that he was murdered. Then it was very important for us to reveal the mystery of this golden boy that everyone knows everything about him. And it's very important to know about uh, our history. This is why you cannot believe the media there that came to DNA the Cairo Museum the for the press conference. Everyone all over the world is fascinated by the golden boy. Let's talk about how he died because there have, yes. there have been various stories over the years about his cause of death. Okay. And as I understand it, that has now been determined pretty much for certain. What have you found about what the cause of death was for King Tut? Okay, because his father married his sister, he had many physical problems. The most important, he had a flat, flat foot. His left leg, left foot, the toe has severe uh, necrosis, and it was swollen with pain. This is why he was using a cane to walk. So there are no and we found through DNA that he had severe left. malaria. But In 2005, I found that he had an accident, a fracture in his left leg. Were those diseases and conditions fairly common for the time? Does it tell us that the royalty in that era really didn't uh, have any better health than the, the more common people? Malaria can happen to a king or a common man. A malaria can come from the bite of a mosquito. A king walking in the desert can be by, by, by a mosquito. And this is why we are sure that he had a severe malaria. In the same time, he had weak bones. He walks all the time with sticks. He cannot walk very well. He was limping. So when he had that accident, maybe fell to a chair or a chariot, he died. Let me, ask you, let me ask you, doctor, this new information that has come to light, these new findings that you have made, how does this change our understanding of King Tut and of his times? It can tell us about the history of uh, his family. We can know a lot about the golden boy. We can understand for the first time. We know about four mummies from his family. Now we know about nine. Then we can reconstruct the history of Dynasty 18 of the Egyptian uh, uh, pharaohs, and this is very important uh, period of the ancient Egyptian history. So fascinating. No My gosh. Coming up tonight, NBC Nightly News will have a report on everything we've learned since unsealing Tut's tomb. Some of the artifacts archaeologist Howard Carter uncovered are now on display at Cairo's Antiques Museum of Special Celebration. And tonight, NBC News' Kelly Kobiea gets a guide through history with a legendary Egyptologist. And she'll learn about excavation sites where digging is happening now to unlock the secrets beneath the sands.